Tom Gray here uh, for the next installment in the 109 Craftsman lathe series I fitted a 3 inch 3 jaw self centering chuck uh, just a cheapy from Amazon um, did it with an adapter plate had to do a little machine work on the adapter plate I'll show you how I did it Okay, here's the star of the show, a uh, little tiny three-jaw chuck, um, got it off Amazon, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it was fairly uh, inexpensive, and a faceplate adapter, which I got, I think I got that at the little machine shop, and then the chuck came with uh, three innie jaws and three outie jaws, and uh, uh, a wrench and three fasteners looks like M6 uh, bolts that hold it to the faceplate. Problem is faceplate doesn't fit the chuck. You can see right there. Now the bolt holes do align. You can see down there. It's just that the pilot diameter is too large. But hey, we got a lathe. We can fix that. This lathe is designed or was designed originally to turn between centers, which means you put a dead center into the headstock and turn your work with a drive dog that bolts onto this, onto this backing plate. And then you put the same uh, center in the tailstock. Problem is I only got the one center. This the lathe only came with one, the other one got lost someplace. So I could go buy another number zero Morse taper if I ever want to turn between centers, but I want to start with a chuck. Uh because it's a lot easier to set a chuck up than for the stuff I plan on doing than to mess around with a drive dog and all that stuff. I don't have a drive dog either, so I'm going to start by taking this off, taking off the faceplate, which is just a half inch 20 right hand thread. And typically when I do stuff like this, I put a little plastic washer underneath the, the thing, like the faceplate in this case, uh, makes it a lot easier to get it off. Um, I don't know if you're not supposed to do that or that's wrong or you know fundamentally screwed up I don't know but I don't think it affects precision that much and uh, it sure makes it easy to take apart so I'm gonna leave it on there for now if it messes me up I can always take it off later besides my little plastic washer I'm gonna make sure there's a little bit of oil on there on the threads I don't want this thing getting stuck. Okay, this looks like 2.250 right on the right on the bullet right on the money so two and a quarter right on the money and the inside of this looks like 2.1 let's say 2.1 six two so not a lot to take to take off there but we'll uh we'll chop it down a little bit all right so here's my setup we got a little brazed carbide um i think it's a 15 or seven and a half degree um cutter and i'm gonna come in this way but off of this face so i'm not touching this face get the diameter close 
And since this one of the things people hate or dislike about these Craftsman 109s is there's no, they have weird thread pitches and there's no uh, indicators on the hand wheels. So I'm gonna, I could rig up a run out, uh, a dial gauge, but I'm gonna sneak up on it using my, using calipers and just take a little off, keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. And when I get close, then I'll try fitting and fitting and we'll just sneak into it real slow. Uh, this is cast iron, so I'm running it, running it uh, a, little, a little bit faster. I'm off of, I'm not using the back gears, it's direct cone drive. Um, let me just get it touching and see if the setup's going to work before I do anything serious. That light looked okay. Seems to be cutting okay. Only need to take about 42 thousandths off of the radius here. Not a lot. So, I'll give it a little bit of anchor lube. Just a wee bit. And ease into it. One thing I'm learning here is this guy's got very sensitive, he's very sensitive to the adjustments on the Gibbs. Uh, they seem like they want to grab. Uh, everything's pretty smooth there. Well, we'll just keep tweaking them as we go. Onto the back gears, off of the back gears, or sorry, onto the back gears. So slide out my little knurled knob. And push in. The little grabby pin. That should slow it way down. That's better. It's obviously not chattering as much, and I don't know if you can see it, but the iron's coming off in little curls. And when you cut cast iron, it, it makes little curly chips that are very tightly wound, and it's starting to do that. So I think I'm good on speed. Let's make sure, being really careful here, I don't want to overdo this. Okay, maybe halfway there. The WD-40 seems to work pretty good on, on the cast iron. A little closer. Keep going. Keep going. Keep 
keep going. Okay, just about there. Do a dry fit. Okay, she's on, just on. Okay, so that means the outer diameter, or the diameter closest that way is the right. I'm just gonna cut it all the way in and leave a little room for some kind of a chamfer, which I gotta figure out how I'm gonna cut. Okay, so I'm just outside of that diameter. Take the backlash out, and I'm going to go in that way using the uh, cross slide. A lot of chatter. Taking advantage of the uh, quick change tool post I installed in the last video, I'm going to come in this way to finish the cut. Okay, it's all the way on there but the chamfer. You can just see daylight through the seam between the chuck and the back plate. Alright, now i got to figure out how to cut the chamfer. I think I found my answer for the uh, chamfer. I'm going to do a fillet instead and I'm just going to use a file which has a little bit of a chamfer on it and do it by hand. Hey, there it is. Wow. That fits nice. That just feels righteous. There's no lateral slop in it, but it spins. Oh, that's just righteous. Feels good. Okay. Who'd have thunk it? Old triangular file. All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit before I assemble it. Just just a wee bit of emery cloth just to knock the sharp edges off. The knock on uh, chucks on these little lathes versus a, uh, a special one with an adapter plate versus drive dogs as they cut down on the available bed length Go find something to cut. And here's our cutting test. So I got a piece of uh, half inch galvy in here. 
I know it's pretty soft material, but it is steel. Uh, so I'm just going to take this little raised carbide cutter and just skim off a little bit uh, just to see how she works. Now this does have a weld in it, so there's a weld in this tubing. You might be able to see it right there. Just like all gal or most pipe has got welds, all pipe has weld in it. So you'll hear some banging, <coughs> banging and uh, chattering when when the weld crosses the uh, cutter. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now granted, that was a pretty wimpy cut, but uh, I got to learn this machine. A couple things I picked up already is with the no, uh, no indicators or no markings on the, on the uh, hand wheels, you kind of got to feel your way in to the cut. You can't, there's nothing to go by. So you kind of eyeball it and then go by feel and hope you don't take too much. At least that's the stage I'm at right now. I could fix up a dial indicator on here. Maybe I will. Um, maybe I won't. But it works. It's cutting steel. Again, granted, kind of a wee, wimpy cut. But it's got nice finish. It's very smooth. Um, it works. And the little chuck works, and it's cute as hell. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is a success. Uh, so I'm gonna call this one good. Um, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, and then it's on to the next project. I will see you there and then.